Hi, a pretty human beings of the internet. It's your boy Nathan Cha, and today we're not even gonna get controversial. We're just gonna hop on the McFreaking bandwagon on this entire mess that is currently unfolding on the interwebs. Um, but first of all, let me sip the proverbial tea that is actually coffee, so I have the energy to cope with this heckin' mess. Alright, so our fave Joanne Karen Rowling is back with some not really unexpected transphobia and um, we're here to react to it because darling, dear, sweetie pie, this is not the thing to do right now. Um, we're, we're in the midst of a pandemic, we're in the midst of a global uprising of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is so, so, so much more important than your petty fucking transphobia. You know, when I grew up, I'm not a native English speaker, but Harry Potter to me was my first interaction with British culture and it's got a massive freaking place in my heart. Um, I started reading it, I think when I was 12 years old, but that was in German and I didn't like it very much. <laughs> I revisited it when I was about 15 and I was, you know, proficient enough in the English language to kind of grasp what the books were saying. So I just kind of like disappeared into the world, these books. And it was such an immersive experience. The, you know, iconic thing to me is that as a young trans person who had no idea that they were trans, these books gave me a lot of solace. I found a home within them, as have so many other LGBTQ plus folks. I've listened to the community. A fudge ton of folks are really heartbroken over those sentiments for exactly this reason. It's so hard finding a safe place within a world that seemingly rejects you. You know, for me it was very interesting that I actually related a lot to the main character because I felt the sort of like teen boy anger, this like isolation and solitude, the sort of always feeling like you carry a lot more emotional baggage than your peers to really fit in. That was such a thing I really, really related to. That was such an emotionally authentic moment for me. Without ever knowing that I would grow up to be who I am today, I kind of really vibed with some of the male characters, uh, especially in the movies, because I just kind of felt like I was them and they were living a childhood and a youth that I didn't get to live. So it was really some sort of like living through them. Now, for those of you who haven't read the tweets, I'm just gonna read them to you, so, you know, you know what's up. Um, and yeah, the tweet that started off this entire conversation in the first place was one that she tweeted on June 6, where she shared a an opinion piece called Creating a More Equal Post-COVID-19 World for People Who Menstruate. And her comment to that was basically, people who menstruate? I'm sure there used to be a word for these people. Someone help me out. Woombin? Wimpund? Wumud? I mean... <laughs> sure. 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 Honestly, I'm the first person who will condemn a word like Woombin, which, to my knowledge, is a term that has been coined by trans-exclusionary radical feminists for women who have a womb. I think it is so heavily trans-exclusionary and not really helpful in any way because it neither includes other people who have a womb and who menstruate, nor does it meaningfully include trans women, which, you know, it kind of should. <laughs> so I find this patronizing and dismissive tone of her already very horrendous. Not surprising though, because I personally have come in contact with quite a lot of cis women um, in my day who think like that. One wonders why she feels the need to comment shit like that. It's been quite recent that people who are non-binary, people who are transmasculine, people who are in the possession of a womb, people who menstruate, have had the opportunity to be included in conversations like that. People who menstruate is just an accurate term. Not all people who menstruate are women. There is no need to heavily politicize 
this shit when we're literally talking about bettering the world for people who might not have access to menstrual products. So after kind of like trying to pretend that she's such an ally because she has a lesbian friend who agrees with her and she really pulled the I have a gay friend so I can't really be problematic card. After she did that, she felt the need to add to her tweets. Because yeah, we all totally asked for more opinions from her. Thanks! Now, in a veritable triptych of tweets on June 7th, J.K. Rowling tweeted, and I quote, If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people. But erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. The idea that women like me, who've been empathetic to trans people for decades, feel in kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences, is a nonsense. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. Oh, sweetie pie darling, babe. There's so much to unpack in these three tweets alone. So let's get out this freaking suitcase. First of all, since when is J.K. Rowling a notable LGBTQ plus ally? Like, I mean, she cares so much about same-sex attraction being invalidated by trans people. I mean, last time I checked, she's not queer. Last time I checked, her only interest in queer issues is when she can actually use them to very ineffectively veil her transphobia. The people who are talking about sex as this like over-category, this end-all argument to gender diversity, are mostly people who are very adamant about like um, excluding intersex people, because they love pretending there's only two sexes. Sex is not male and female. Intersex people exist. They've existed since people have existed. They are not an anomaly. They are not unnatural. Intersex people are fucking valid. By insisting upon the definition of sex as something rigidly binary, we are erasing them. And that's not a thing we should be doing. I mean, I don't think we need the definition of sex to talk about women's issues. And at that, women's issues are also trans women's issues because, you know, trans women are women. Trans women experience sexism, but to a further extent because they also often experience transphobia. If she cares about women's issues that much, she should really, really consider that trans women face the same shit as her. Trans women have a right to claim their womanhood. Trans women have a right to talk about their womanhood and their experiences with sexism just the same way as cis women do. Only a person who doesn't truly believe that trans women are women would make tweets like that. Another favorite part of mine is women like me who have been empathetic to trans people for decades. If this is what her empathy looks like, I'd rather not have it. I, a trans person, do not want J.K. Rowling's empathy. Joanne Karen Rowling, keep your freaking empathy to your freaking self. Thank you very much. I've met so many cisgender, heterosexual women in my life, a lot of Karens, that have really tried to bring home the idea that they are so tolerant, so accepting of trans people, and they really, they really think we're people. They, they really think we're people, how kind of them. Of course, we will never be like them. Of course, we will never be as good and as whole and as full and as natural as a cis person. But, you know, th that's not the kind of treatment I wish from another human being. She goes on to say that she feels a kinship with trans people 
because we're vulnerable in the same way to violence, male violence. Now, I don't know where she gets a claim from that transphobia and sexism are precisely the same kind of violence, because they're not. They influence each other, because both are very heavily informed by an idea of binary genders. Both are very heavily informed by male privilege, cis male privilege. They're not interchangeable, and the oppression she faces as a cisgender woman is not the same as trans people face. She also tweeted that she would march with us if we were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. And I don't know under which rock she's been hiding, because we are discriminated on the basis of being trans each day. Because, yeah, pride exists for no apparent reason, seemingly. I mean, to her, it obviously doesn't, because she tweeted this during Pride Month. And to top off this entire shit Sunday with a gorgeous little transphobic cherry on top, she also shared an article titled Anonymous Letter from a Terrified Lesbian with a quote that says I've never felt as shouted down, ignored, and targeted as a lesbian within our supposed GLBT community as I have over the past couple of years. I used to watch Harry Potter movies quite regularly, like every Christmas or something, and it was always a thing where I could feel safe, and now I don't really do that anymore, because it's always got this bitter aftertaste to it. You know, queers and friends, at the end of the day, I believe J.K. Rowling is just another cisgender heterosexual white woman who feels the need to feel very, very oppressed by the world wherein actually a lot of other people are oppressed and deserve to have their voices heard. The thing is, she's trying to speak for a community that really doesn't want her to speak for us. And if you look through her Twitter comments, it's actually thoroughly encouraging to just go out and enjoy Pride season and keep on fighting for our rights, because there's a ton of LGBTQ plus people on there defending our rights. There's a ton of lesbians saying, please don't appropriate our heckin' community for your own misguided ideas about lesbianism. We're not here for that, we're here to support our trans sisters, and I find that very freaking beautiful. If you have been hurt by Karen's tweets, make sure you engage with the comments. If you need your faith in humanity restored a little bit, make sure to check them out. I just felt like my heart is glowing a little with pride, which, you know, is really what it should all be about during Pride season. So I hope all of you can take a moment to not take this woman seriously, because her opinion really doesn't matter. There are so many people out in the world who are willing to back us up, who are willing to support our liberation and the progress in society. And those are the people you should really listen to, we should connect with. I hope you're all having a wonderful Pride season, despite all this garbage. I hope you're making sure that you're on the right side of history with learning about the Black Lives Matter movement and how we can all do better. And make sure to listen and learn to folks who are currently creating a better world for Black people, a more equal world. I hope you're taking this positive and progressive energy forward because all these tweets are as a waste of freaking time and we've got better shit to do. So please take good care and know that you are loved and supported and that any turf rhetoric and any transphobia is just wrong. It's just wrong.